Right, you unmuted and okay. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. I pray that you all somewhere warm and enjoying the beginning of another Sabbath. Today we will pick up right where we left off. Um <clears throat> at 2 Samuel chapter 22. Uh, I believe we'll pick up at about 31, 32. Uh, but bef before we get started, let us just review a little bit some of the things that really stood out to us um, on last week that could really be beneficial to us. Let us bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, we pause with thanksgiving upon our hearts. Lord, we're so thankful that you have blessed us with another opportunity to study thy word. We pray that you will be present to lead us, to guide us, to give us wisdom. We pray, Father, that you will be present to magnify your word in our hearts, simplifying your word, making it plain. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Anything y'all remember right off that stood out last week? I'm going to tell you something that I love. Um, but anything y'all remember? Um, I don't know. Um, that God is a bunk with y'all and that trust in He's a protector. He's a protector of all those that trust in him. Okay. I mean, that's good because you know if you really trust in the Lord, if your trust is in the Lord, you will be what? Protected. Mm -hmm. You will have a shield. Mm -hmm. So, uh, boy, we better, you know, we all need to make sure that our trust is in who? Oh, there you go. Now, I'm going to tell you something that really... Um, you know, you, when you look at that, I don't think we think about it enough because I believe that if we did, we would be better Christians. And that's the part where he said in verse 25, therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my uh, cleanness in his eyes, in his sight. That's what, God rewarded him based on what? How he lived. How he lived or how, how God died. saw him. That's kind of it's scary to even do that. Even when you think you live in right to even say that God paint you for how clean you live. And you know that's still because but 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 you know what? I understand exactly what you're saying. But in this case, what's different? This was the spirit talk. God, this is something that God wanted us to, to know. Mm -hmm. That to the merciful, God will show himself merciful. He said, uh, to the upright man, thou will show thyself upright. All the way down to the forward, he will show himself forward. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, your behavior towards man and God, your behavior would dictate your treatment from God. You mean God's going to be mean to you. You treat people good and merciful, God is going to treat you good and be merciful unto you. Go ahead. Remember, they need to hear you. Okay, so if you don't love God, God is not going to do anything for you. Well, God is a little different in that regard because God says that he reigns and he blesses the just as well as the unjust. God is good to people that that's not good to him. He does give people second chances. 
he he really does give people second. If it wasn't for second chances and third and fourth chances, I wouldn't be here today. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Chains of chances. Oh, oh, please. <laughs> and, and, and I understand why I get excited when I learn that God is rich in mercy because my own experience has proven that he is very rich in mercy. Can any of us deny that? No, sir. No. Because we've done some things no, in our life. Amen. So, y'all, I just love that. Oh, uh, pick up at 33. Well, the touch 31 while we're there. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. You know what amazes me about that? It says that the way of the Lord is perfect. How God does his work, goes about his business, is perfect. And I think about the man that would dare say, I just would do it differently. You ever heard that? Mm -hmm. People talking in reference to God. But yet the Bible say God's way is perfect. So whatever you would do different from God, that way is not perfect. Whatever you would do differently. I know some of us get upset with God for showing people mercy. You know, somebody that have done something to your child or your family, mm -hmm. you get upset when God is merciful to that person, not realizing that that was you too. You've done some things worthy of death, but God had mercy on you. We see it for us, not for other people. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That's very true. Come on, Brendan. For who is God? Save the Lord. And who is a rock? Save our God. God is my strength and power. And he that maketh my way perfect. You know what? Anything resonate with y'all from that verse 33? God is my strength and power. What do we think about? What comes to our mind when we think about that? All, this, all the success that he had. That's where it came from. All the success that he had. Yeah. yeah. And, one, all that. that was just coming straight from God. And see, y'all be busy giving David all the glory for whooping a lion oh. like it was David. Yeah. 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 Who gave him the strength? God. Well, so who should get the glory? God should get the glory. It's like God <clears throat> is helping you and you're like using him for everything <laughs> like everything you want you get but people praise for you for that reason yeah they praise man instead of god where did samson get his power from god, from god. so when you read god is my strength and power and he make it my way perfect. I think about the song that we sing, and I don't think we really it really resonates with us what we are actually saying sometimes. When we sing the song, God is the joy and the strength of my life. Remember that? They move. Y'all. He moves out. Gersha, you, you he laughing at my song? I don't remember. <laughs> no, God is. Yeah. Then we played it the other day. But I, I understand what the scripture is saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? But 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 Brent, but that's in all of them. Yeah. Okay. Um God the strength is. of my life. Yeah. Okay. 
God, I'm surprised you should know. You listen to it every Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You don't remember? I just listened to different songs. That's all I was. But you don't remember the words. Oh, yeah. So God is. We're gonna play it when we get done. Okay, so y'all know. The God is my everything. Yeah. Okay. But check this out. He, it, David, understood. And gave, he was careful to give God the glory for his strength and his power. So a lot of people praise David. Remember what they said, y'all, when the crowd was saying, David killed his what? 10,000. And Saul killed his thousand. So they were praising David, but David made sure that it was God the one that really got the glory. That's something that we, we neglect. Go ahead. Sister Brea said we should be giving God so much glory that it should feel weird if we don't. Mm -hmm. You know what? Mm -hmm. Brea, you know what? That's right. And uh, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Uh, it, should, it should feel weird, weird not praising the Lord. You praise him, Carson? All the time. Okay. Come on. Come on. Okay. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and sitteth me upon my high places. Now, I don't know what 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 comes to your mind when you read that verse. Ro, does yours read any different? He makes my feet as steady as those of a deer. Even on steep mountains, he keeps me from falling. You know what? That's awesome because, mm -hmm. you know, it just broke it down. Let me tell you something. Have y'all ever seen those wild animals, those goats on the yeah. side of cliffs? Fine, yeah. Man, let me tell y'all something. I'm not going to kid y'all. That literally is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my life. You're doing all of that fighting, right? Taking your feet up. Yeah. You hitting each other and you keep yeah. your... Yes. On Man, I cannot comprehend that. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and at any minute, I'll be looking for those uh, goats to fall to their death. Mm -hmm. And they keep their foot in fighting on the side of a mountain. Mm -hmm. Who does? How can you do that? But David said, he maketh my feet like hinds feet and set it me uh, and set me upon my high places. Y'all, that says a lot. In other words, what I think about God will keep you from slipping. He will keep your feet from slipping. And this is another thing. He will keep us from falling. David understood that. Is God that makes him stand. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> the great songstress says that God is the joy, the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. <laughs> he promised to keep me, never to leave me. He'll never, ever come short of his word. That's Sister Shalinda. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I wanted to know who said that. <laughs> they must can sing. She can sing. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I appreciate that, Shalanda. If, 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 if I could sing, I probably remember all that too. <laughs> wow. Man. Who keep y'all feet? God does. He's the one who made us. He is the one that has made us. Now watch this. Come on. 35. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy gentleness has made me great. 
Thou hast Wait a minute. Read that 36, Ro. Lord, you have given me your shield to protect me. It is your help that has made me great. Mm -hmm. It's your help that has made me great. I mean, can all of us relate to that? Whatever good is in us, it came from who? God. So do we, that, that's absolutely right. There is absolutely no good in us except what God has given us, what God has done for us. Because the Bible let us know that there is what? Absolutely no good thing that that comes with this flesh, yeah. comes from within. There's nothing good. Mm -hmm. have, have we learned that? Yes, I've learned it personally. Yes, the flesh is not worth a quarter. No, no, y'all, I'm serious. Anything that's contrary to God, that's what the flesh desires. It, it, it's amazing to me how that thing works. Go ahead. Uh, Mother Barbara was just saying we need God's strength and power to live holy in this wicked and evil world. Oh, no doubt about in it. These last days. You don't do it without the power. And in fact, we understand that the more we uh, know God personally, we understand why God told him, don't go out without the promise. Wait until the promise comes. And y'all know that was the Holy Spirit because they needed power to witness. The Holy Ghost was that power that they needed that would bless them in their ministries. Y'all, without the power of the Holy Ghost, we just sounding brass and tinkling cymbals, only having a form of godliness, but again, denying the power. That power is the Holy Ghost. And we need that. What are we without the Holy Ghost? Nothing. Sinners. Willful sinners. Nothing. Can't stop. Can't we don't have no self-control. So we willful sinners without the Holy Ghost. Yes. You said no self-control. Yeah. No, because God's the only thing that gives us self-control. Like we would do things like like the Bible say, doesn't say in Proverbs, the hardest thing to control is your tongue. Or what in uh, in, or yeah, like you're that. talking about in James, yeah, real only way yeah. you can get control of that is the Holy Spirit helping you because some people just used to have five mouths and everything. And and no <laughs> <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Go ahead. Okay. She won't tell me in private. Okay, come on. Pick up there. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, so that my feet did not slip. I pursued mine enemies and destroyed them and turned not again until I had consumed them. You know, when the Bible said that anything come to y'all mind, when he said, I have pursued mine enemy and destroyed them and turned not again until I had consumed them. Anything in the Bible come to your mind when y'all re read that? When Saul didn't finish off what God told him to finish. When he told him okay. to kill Agag, but he said he went and consumed his, you know. You know what? He finished the job. Okay. Now that's a good one. Y'all, can y'all remember another one? Um, where the enemies were concerned? Well, remember when the Lord, um, remember when the man beat the ground concerning oh, his yeah. enemy? He beat it what? Three times, Three times yeah. and stopped. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, you only going to have three victories because you just bam, bam, bam. And that was it. He said, you should have continued and you would have gotten the total victory, but because you stopped at three. Ooh, God was counting like that. You know, that's <laughs> tough, man. <laughs>
But you know what? It was all to teach us, though. I mean, what did we learn from that? Do it all your might. Do it to your do own. Do it with all of your might. Don't just do a few and stop. Stay there. And he said, you're just going to have three victories and that's it. He said, you should have kept on. And so when David said, uh, and turn not again until I had consumed them. You got to fight till you get the victory. And I think this is true in uh, uh, get us to now. You know, I really think this is true in a lot of aspects of our lives. I think we quit a lot of things before we get the victory. Can y'all think of some things in your own life where you gave up too soon? Um, I think a lot of people give in to the flesh when they single and don't wait on God to bless them with a, a spouse. And, and you know they, what? And I don't think it's just when they single. I think married people Oh, give, in. give in too. Until they marry. Not yeah. just, oh man, please. Because yeah, it, it gives you some hard times too. Because if you know how how widespread infidelity is, people don't fight firmly and hard enough to really make sure that they get the victory. I've seen games where if if people had just put a little bit more effort, they, they'd have won the game. So there are lessons that we can learn in life. And I think we quit too quick. Uh, kind of like Saul when Samuel was on his way. He quit just a minute too soon and he lost everything. I think it, uh, I think the devil make you feel stagnant sometimes and you just do something else. Like you, you be wanting to live right, but then it's like the same thing over and over. Oh yeah, and then you know, you just get sick of doing that same thing over and over. But doing it over and over, you just need to do that into death, no matter what yes. it takes to just stay doing yes. it. You know yes. what I'm saying? Because man, the devil, the devil play with people. I know. You know what? Let me tell you something. Because when you when you say doing something over and over, how often should we eat bread? Every day. We should eat our what? Daily, Daily bread. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we do every single day. Yeah. Right? Yes. Do y'all get tired of eating? Uh -uh. <laughs> y'all don't get tired of eating? No. Okay. Because God expects you to do it daily. How, how, how often should we pray? Every day. How often did Daniel pray? Every day? Three times a day. Because we do that every day over and over, is that something we should get tired of doing, saying, oh, boy, same old thing? But the devil make people feel that. And I'm going to tell you something. Those same people that say that they're tired of doing the same old thing, let me tell you the danger with that. How often do we brush our teeth? Well, for most of us, every day. <laughs> so, supposed to what? Every day. And every day. Yes, sir. How, how often do we get up and wash our face? Every day. Huh? Every day. Every day. Do we get tired of washing our face? No, sir. How often do you take baths? It's funny when you go to work. Let me show you something, a routine. If you're a truck driver, you driving, you driving, doing the same thing every day. If you're a police officer, you get out there and you do the same thing every day. You're a nurse, you're doing the same thing. It's something about your teacher. You've been teaching that same thing. You taught me that 40 years ago and you're still teaching the same thing. 
What's the point? Only when it comes to God are we sensitive about being repetitive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every Sabbath. Every Sabbath. Yes, every Sabbath. The Bible says Jesus went to church every Sabbath. Paul was in church every Sabbath. Not every other. Y'all, in life, it involves doing the same things every day, repeatedly. Every day. Go ahead. Uh, Brother Pat come in and said, uh, that's why we do give in that we give in too easily and we don't continue until we get the victory that's why god says don't get weary in doing well yes lord bro pat and, and and that's a powerful uh passage when you really look at it don't get weary in doing well because sometimes man when you fighting 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 Sometimes it's easy to get weary, but you are commanded not to get, not to become weary in your fight. Why? What happens if you become weary? Now the enemy can what? Take advantage of you because you quit. Remember when David got weary the other day? What did they do to David? They took him. Uh, they took him back. So from now on, you don't come out here on the battlefield. We fight. We fight. You are worth 10,000 of us. You don't come out here and fight anymore. We got this. Because he had gotten a little older. He couldn't do the same thing he could do in his youth. He probably wanted to. Go ahead. Uh, Sister Brendan made a good comment. Uh, she says, um, the enemy will make you feel like you cannot do the same praiseworthy routine towards God, even in a different environment, too. Can't do the same praise. You know, we, we say when it comes to God, the things of God, we want to make things change, we want everything to be different, and, you know. But it's, you know, that consistency when it comes to the things of God should be just as it is with us brushing our teeth, being the cop, or being the nut, whatever it is we do routinely. You know, isn't that funny? You drive the same way to work. You've been going that way for years. You're working at the same job. You get up at the same time every morning. You cook breakfast. You do the same thing every day. Only when it comes to the things of God do we allow that to be an issue. Only when it relates to the things of God. More Bible study. And we need this Bible. Oh, oh God, brother, let me tell you something. We we can't get enough of God's word. Do y'all feel like that? Can't get enough of it. Y'all, we 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 really can't. We we are underserved right now. Come on. And I have consumed them and wounded them that they could not arise. Yea, they are fallen under my feet. <laughs> For thou hast girded me with the strength, with strength to battle. Them that rose up against me hast thou subdued under me. You know, I'm glad that he say, Lord, you've given me the strength to fight. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know what? Again, we always say, I can do all things through who? Christ. Christ which what? Strengthens me. Doesn't Christ strengthen us? You ever, you ever been on a test and the only way you made it is God helped you? I mean, that's a lot of tests where God brought us through. Wow. Come on. Thou hast also given me the necks of my enemies, that I may destroy them that hate me. <laughs> I looked, but there was they, none. They looked. they looked, but there was none to save, even unto the Lord. But he answered them not. Now, what is 
verse 42 sharing with us. People that David was fighting. They can depend on God because they didn't serve God. Listen, so people that David were fighting, he said, notice, he said, they looked, but there was none to say. Then he let you know, they even looked to the Lord. They prayed to God to help them with me. They went to God in prayer concerning David. What does that tell you about the people that he's talking about? They weren't his children. They weren't the Lord's children. No, sir. Yeah, they, 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 they were asking for his help. So they knew that he was able to help them. But what else can we learn from that? Huh? So they literally thought that God would help them fight David. That tell you what they thought about David. They thought David was somebody that God would help them fight against. That tell you, man, your mind can be so messed up and you not even be able to see it. You judging, you had to be judging David as being something else. You praying, God, help me get this man. You blind. That's God's son. You asking God to help you defeat David. That tell you how out of touch you 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 you, you are to be praying that. And I'm gonna tell y'all something, y'all. I think a part of the problem is how we see ourselves sometimes. We see ourselves as the righteous when in reality, we have a long way to go. Some of the people that we trying to help are living better than we are. That's trying to help them. I'm going to give you what, what, where I'm coming from. When Jesus said, uh, before you go out and help that man, get that moat out of his eye. Before you do that, consider yourself. Take some time to get that big old beam out of your own eye. And then when you can see clearly, you can help your brother. But I think some of us are just like that. We're trying to, we're trying to help people that's better off than what we are. Because we see ourselves to be something and somewhere that we are not. So, man, I'm just, I'm just reading and understanding that people were asking God to help whoop David, and David was more righteous than they. They were looking at David like they were more righteous than David. So, y'all, we need to watch how we look at ourselves, and we better learn how to take a very humble yes. view yes. of oh, ourselves. Man. Never thinking you nothing. Right. I, I still be scared today because I know, you know, you look at where you, how far you've come, but I'm like, man, I still got so much further. I know I need. Yes, to Lord. Period. And I just be asking God to just help me get there. You know what I'm saying? Because I think sometimes you can be distracted with doing so much. And, but you're not practicing nothing. Will it just feel like you need to do something more? Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, huh? I say, yes, Lord. Go ahead. Uh, so, Mother Barbara says, uh, We should love God like we do things that we never get tired of. Ooh. Like spending money. <laughs> <laughs> love God like we love spending money? Yeah. You know what? You know, David said a lot. But he said something about also, wait a minute, rejoice also, wait a minute, in, the Lord. in the Lord. No, not that one. Not that one. Mm -hmm. 
See, see, because we we enjoy, we have certain things we enjoy, and like the sister said, and we don't get tired of doing certain things. We don't get tired of doing certain things, but man, and it's sad. But when, when it comes to serving God, I don't think we do it with our whole hearts. Because, you know, and, and, and I believe some people do. But I don't believe that that's something man practices as we ought. Do it with all of your might. I don't think we do that. Because, well, 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 when you look at it, God has been better to us than what we can ever be to ourselves. Yeah. And we know that, yeah. right? Yeah. So y'all don't think when we walk into his house, there's a sense we should feel a sense of, man, all you have to do is start thinking about what he's done for you. I enjoy, I enjoy, like I love service, like going. Um, and I mean, I I even enjoy living for God because it's, it's see, you said course. something you love, you love when it's time to worship. Yeah, especially the weeks I don't have to preach. I really enjoy it. But see, and you know what? And that's the mind that all of us should have. I remember when David said, "Y'all remember? I was glad." When they said it, listen, man, I was glad. I was excited. And I know some things that used to excite me before I met the Lord. And you, what? Some things excited you. But David said, and they tell you why he was in Christ. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house. Worship was major to David. Now, why y'all think he loved worship? And why do you think it was such an integral part of his life? Because God has been so good. When God be good to you, yeah. man, it's and God don't have to be good to you. You know what I'm saying? But that's just a time where you can really go back. You can praise him. That time is set aside to praise God. And that's like that's why I can't really I can't really comprehend people sitting down doing praise and worship. That time that's set aside to praise God. I just I I just can't I can't comprehend it. Because he be God too good to us. And that's the time that we set aside to praise him in that hour right then and there. And we sit down and act like he ain't, you know, he hadn't done nothing. Like God ain't worthy. Are you just clapping your hands or something? I just, man, if we think about how good God is, how much he keeps us from the accidents, the robberies. Mm -hmm. It's be stuff happening to people all over the city all week long, and God be spurring us and keeping us. And we take it for granted because we spoil. God be really looking out for us, and he, he really deserves a whole lot more than what we get. He really do. And as far as being careful with every move we make in life, we should be extremely careful uh, because of his goodness. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes back to what David said about how he kept himself from his iniquity. Mm -hmm. I mean, that tell you, David put up a fight. So don't think because David wasn't out there that wasn't nothing pulling him out there. There was a pull on David just like on us. The difference is David said, man, I, I just wasn't going to do it. I kept myself from doing it. A lot of us get tempted. You're not the only one. But David said, I just couldn't do God like that. And I'm going to tell you who else I, I think about Joseph when I think about that. When the lady, uh, you think his flesh wouldn't want to check that sister out? Wasn't nobody at home but them. Potiphar was away. But the brother had something in his heart. God had shown him the, the dreams. He knew he had a bright fruit future just staying with God. He knew God had something for him that he wanted to see. And when that woman tried to do what she did. He didn't say nothing about 
How can I do this to Papa? Oh, no, <laughs> oh yeah, God gave Remembering the promise that God yes. made. Yes, yes. I shouldn't even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's a mess. I never put no, no, the dreams is. at that time. Yes. Like the he number, was holding on to what God had already shown. Yes, him. man. And that that's powerful for you to hold on to what God didn't show you. Your birthright, basically, you hold yes. on to that because yes, later on people gonna be looking up to you for something. And that's why brothers them hated him because God had shown him. Remember, they hated him for all his dream. You think we're gonna bow down to you? Remember when all the she's bowed down to him and yes. stuff? So. I think with that story. Oh yeah. When the woman came, just that the dreams was before that happened. Yes. Man. And uh the brother said, How could I commit this sin against my God? And see, a lot of us don't have that relationship where we put God first. We may say, Boy, my wife find this out. Oh, my husband find this out. You know, not realizing he went Man. straight to the source. You don't need to be worried about no spouse. <laughs> You're spouse, exactly right. Spouse can't get you. Yes. God know how to get yes. you. Oh, yes. Your spouse, you can hide it from them for years, but when God deal with you, it's yes. over with. Yes. Yes, Lord. So come on. You had a couple of um, okay comments. Go ahead. Yeah. So one comment was made. We were talking about the um routines. Uh Brother Calvin says, uh, God even showed us routines in Genesis because he could have. <laughs> Just created the world in a wink, but he made heaven and earth in a routine manner. He did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's that's right, Calvin. Monday, yeah, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's right, Calvin. Creation was done with some consistency. Seven days. Oh, amen. That's good, Calvin. Brother, Go ahead. Brother Pat said it's so true. He said, we'd be breaking the law, trying to make it to work on time when we running late. He said, but dragging when it comes to making it to church. Ah! Shaking my head. It's stopping, oh. at, stopping at all the stop signs. Bro, Pat, you stepping on <laughs> you stepping on some toes, man. Yeah. Now, that's it's interesting, true. though. Yes. I, I mean, I really appreciate that because we do be about to run people over. Yes almost about to run red lights to get to work on time but work can't 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 get close to what god can do for us work can't compare to god and you know what i'm wondering us i'm wondering how many of us really really take god as god and giving God what he deserved, giving God according to his worth. Now, see, that's scary because we don't show God as being as valuable as our job. We don't show God as being as valuable. Y'all, this, this, this is real serious. Your kids' graduation mean more to you than God. You break your neck, you there on time. Y'all, God is, man, and I'm praying that uh, even myself do more and be better. Because, boy, I feel like we have so much room to improve. I think we have a long way to go as it relates to our being all we can be uh, or our just giving God what he deserves. I think we have a long way to go in doing so. Mm -hmm. And I think we just need to start. This is for God. You know, if you're going to be late somewhere, be late for work. Yes. yes. Be late on your fishing trip. Be late mm -hmm. for your, uh, uh, your flight. Oh. Kids at school, amen. But y'all, man, we just need to do better when it comes to our Father in heaven. Y'all, He just deserves better. That's why everything should start. So everything should start. He first, the kingdom of heaven, and everything. We do it backwards. We want the things added into us, and we don't want to put God's seat, God first, 
and the the things, whatever it may be, that stuff will come after you put him first. Like that's why I refuse. Like I that's it, that's God set us aside that time every time, but like that's mandatory right there. So I never want to be late for church. I don't want my family to be late for church. I don't want I that's why I don't even I we try we plan all our vacations away from time. So because I don't want to just miss church unless it's absolutely necessary. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just prioritizing that because that's most important. That's the most important thing I can do. I let my kids take out from school. They but you know the church that's important. Yes, Lord. Very important. Yes. And you know that's uh awesome. And God acknowledges when you prioritize his uh his house, his service, okay. things of God. Okay. And, 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 very disrespectful to God a lot. Ah, Pat, you sure you won't come to church in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> That's some good stuff, though. And uh, Lord, help us. There's a saying. And if we just could remember this, because a lot of us have earthly endeavors, earthly ambition earthly pursuits. Let me let me tell y'all something. You can chase things and miss God. But if you chase God, things will come. Get it? If you put God first, things will come. Now, dive in the Bible on that. Listen, God said, if you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, everything, everything that you need shall be added unto you. So when God is first, things come. Y'all, that's what he tried to get the Gentiles, uh, the Jews to understand about the Gentiles. He said, the Gentiles are chasing things. It's all about the dollar. It's all about money. He said, now, God already know what you need. He said, I'm going to tell you something. Don't be like the Gentiles. Put God first. And God going to send you those things that they are chasing, that they are putting God down for. God said, if you put him first, he will send you the things. But I promise you, you put the things first that career, those jobs, whatever, you're going to miss help. So let's, let's learn to, man, put our master first in all things. Uh, boy, that should be our new beginning. Is that okay, Scott? Okay, come on. What, what time do you have now? Let me see my they looked, but there was none to save, even unto the Lord. But he answered them not. <laughs> so you see, if you're on the wrong side of things, I don't care that you're praying to God. If you're on the wrong, wrong side of things, God will not answer you. You see, these people were praying to God concerning David. God didn't answer them. Why? Because David was his servant. They were wrong. Watch this. Go ahead. Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth. I did stamp them as the mire of the street and did spread them abroad. Thou also hast delivered, hast delivered me from the strivings of my people. Thou hast kept me to be head of the heathen. A people which I knew not shall serve me. Now, watch this. Ro, read that verse in your 44. You saved me from those who fought against me. You made me the ruler over nations. People I never knew now serve me. You know what's interesting about this? Did y'all see anything now? What's that? Not even the heathen serve me? No, not that. Oh, his own people? Yeah, his own people. Yes, sir. What is God sharing with us there about David? He was he was he was still in control throughout everything. Even the stuff that happened with Absalom and all that, God was still in control, looking out for him. When the people, what's the guy name who came out and said 
they have nothing to do with David. God is still in control. Yeah, but in this 44, there's something that I'm trying to see if we glean from it. Verse 44. What did God deliver David from? From those people, from the strivings of his, of his people. Watch it. Read that one more time, Ro. Listen to this, y'all. You saved me from those who fought against me. You made me the ruler over nations. So he had opposition from the kingdom. Some of his own people. Does that ring a bell? What does it tell us about Moses? Did, did Moses have some people in that wilderness that's supposed to be a part of the same church turned against him, tripped out with him? Did not Jesus come unto his own and his own received him not? What did we learn, y'all? We're going to go through Just because they hear people. Just because people fellowship with you or in the same body with you does not mean they all going to be right. And that they all are going to be for you. Some people would do you dirty. David said his only for his own familiar friend betrayed him. Right. Somebody he went to how the house of God with that, listen, turned on him. Y'all. Y'all see saw Jesus sitting up in church when those church members tried to kill him. How many times did that happen? Church members having meetings to kill Jesus. Church members. So David, you know, you know, you know, this is interesting. Thou also has delivered me from the strivings of my people. I remember even when Dr. King was working, all those people were telling him to stop doing what he was doing. I mean, and they were telling him, you're making it bad for, for black people. You need to stop that. I mean, y'all be surprised at the opposition. What were they, what were they mad at? What were they mad at? Because they were causing a lot of persecution. Yeah. You know, those, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember, they were getting hosed oh, yeah. and stuff. I mean, dogs were being sick them. So people were saying, man, this ain't the time for this. People don't like opposition. They want, everybody just want peace with everybody. But there could be no peace when? When you want righteousness. Huh? When you want righteousness. When you want righteousness. When you walk with Christ. And when things are, listen, how could there be peace as long as the devil is robbing souls, stealing people? Uh, huh? Yeah, how could there be peace when the devil is running roughshod in the world? How could there be peace? Oh, is that on church folk, Calvin? Going to church with these folk every day. And Jeremiah was only standing for what he knew was right. What I'm trying to tell you is it always has been like that and it always will be like that. So are y'all prepared for opposition? No, seriously. This is going to hurt. <laughs> are we prepared? No. <laughs> Because, see, if somebody walked up on you and, and, and knocked you up against the wall and punched you in the jaw a few times and told you, uh, you know, you better stay home next week. Let me catch you up here again uh, next Sabbath, and you're going to see what's going on. Are you going to have an excuse why you can't go to church? You probably get stuck way somewhere in another city. I just couldn't make it, right? <laughs> you said what, Gersh? I was thinking, I don't even want to say I will. I'm going to do this. Peter said he would. But I, I always put that in my head. Like, I'll die for that. Like, yeah. I'll die for that reason. I wouldn't care. It wouldn't matter. And so, and, 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 and praise the Lord, you say it. Just like you said, 
I just, uh, you know, punching and slapping me, you know, I just got <laughs> hopefully another brother there to come to his brother's defense at that time. No! <laughs> 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 he he do not roll me smoothly. Come on, Oh, man. Not to let you go through it, though. You got to be strong enough to handle it. If he put you in that situation. Go ahead, Kareem. If I hit him back, is it considered self-defense? Yes. So I wouldn't be in trouble with that. Yes. Because <laughs> yeah. self-defense, Queen asking, isn't that self-defense? They hit me, I hit them back. The only problem with that is God said that now you are to resist not evil. He said, if they smite you on one cheek, give them the other. Why can't I just leave? Well, you can leave. It's good if you can leave before they can get to you. They beat Jeremiah down. Oh, they did. Yeah. Even when they, they were trying to kill uh, Paul, yeah. they had to put him down outside the wall. But they were, they were looking for him. They had vowed that they wouldn't eat until he was dead. Y'all, that, that's, that's pretty serious. So what happened? They broke their vow. See, because God wasn't in agreement with them. They broke a vow. So, Lord, I just pray he help us in our times and, 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 and put us in a position where we would gladly lay down our lives for his sake. Well, and the enemy was all those Jews that didn't want that new life. <laughs> didn't want it. He went to Rome, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he did. And that's ultimately who killed him. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. Four, four. No. <laughs> four, four. Okay. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient unto me. Mm. Strangers shall fade away, and they shall be afraid out of their close place places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock. And exalted be the God of the rock of my salvation. <laughs> it is God that avenges me. You know what? First of all, he let us know who his rock was. What does that mean? When you think of rock, what do you think Solid, of? Solid, like strong. Foundation. Solid. Yeah, and you think of what else? God is back. Solid. No matter what. God is what? God, is back, no matter what God has it back. And you think of a solid foundation, Brenda, when you hear of rock. Yeah. God was his rock. Go ahead. Mm. Go ahead, read that 48. It is God that avenges me and that bringeth down the people under me. Now, did you hear that, Queen? That's in light of what you, uh, that goes with what you asked. It is God that what? Avenges me. You know what avenge is? You know what avenge is? Well, okay, because you, you just wanted to get them back, though, did you? Yeah, you, boy, they, 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 they messed up. They messed with the wrong one. This day, didn't When that girl walked up and slapped you. See, see that she who avenge you? Who is your avenger? Man. You say that real fast. Yeah, you, <laughs> but you know what? You know what? I'm 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 gonna tell you something. Now you know what? I'm gonna tell you something. Trust me, if you depending on God, he will show you what to do at a given time. Because I remember several situations I was in. When I tell you the Lord literally took control. Yeah. And I played it off too. And I kind of got beside myself. He took control of your hands one time, 
No, he did. Yeah, see, no, he did. So but see, I didn't know what y'all you know. Uh -uh. <laughs> Listen, but I didn't know what y'all know. Bro, you know too much. <laughs> but the, when I say the Lord steps in and would do for you according to your need, Queen, I promise you he'll do it. He had he has shown me how he works. And then he calls. He ain't gonna let nobody just to do uh, you in. He Either he'll step in one way, or he'll step in another way. But he got his children. You don't even have to worry about it. He have somebody that can catch him in the cafeteria in front of everybody. Now, 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 seriously. Every time. No, no, no. Here, you. You just got to believe that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to believe that God to come through for you because he will come through. People are like, oh, no, nah, he ain't going to do it. No, he got it. He will. He, he will, y'all. So like, yeah, your faith, that build up over time. Situations yeah. build your faith up. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that that's true, y'all. He will do that. Go ahead. When I like the situation in Jeremiah a few weeks ago where God caused something to take place, with them and allow them to whoop Israel and do what they did to Israel. Then he turns around and punish them yeah. for what they yeah. did to yeah. his children. His that he allowed to, you know, the one that he used. For to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Same thing. Yeah. Man, yeah. God proved one against him. So 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 that's why what we learn as Christian, you don't ever want to be used to do evil. You don't want nobody walking out talking about boy Gershom man, put those hands on him and wall, boy Gershom good with these. Boy, and you a child of God, you don't want nobody. I'm gonna get crazy to God. I ain't Gershom to God. No. <laughs> God. <laughs> I ain't do nothing. I was just trying to get that little you know, man. Yeah. But but I'm I'm telling y'all, man. That's why I just appreciate God. I don't even have to worry about certain things. He's already told you he wouldn't tempt you above that which you can handle anyway. And if somebody came up to do you harm, trust me, there's going to be a ram in the bush. Somebody going to step in and step up. That's how God looks all out for his people. Somebody come out the lock, come, come out the back. What's going on? What's up? And, and, and take care of the business. I remember when all them jokers out there to jump me out there at the gas station. Man, about 80 of them. I'm telling you, about 80 for real. Man, guy had the biggest one of them out there standing up for me because they, they was they were they were they told me if I was I was sore for about 10 days. Whoa! But the biggest one of them I knew him and he he had got got over. He was like one of the biggest football players out there. Yeah. And he covered you yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. It was so many of them out there, man. When I say 80, I'm not playing. I mean 80. I believe it. When you talk about football team. No, like, yeah, the whole team. Like, yeah. man, it was so many cars that just ran that gas station. It was like, it was crazy. What did you do? It was <laughs> Lord have mercy. Know. Queen say, what you do to bring all that attention? Yeah, see, but but you know what? It helps you to see. It takes adversity such as that to, to see God working mightily on your behalf. See, if you don't have any adversity, how you know what God can do or what he will do? So you have to have a little bit to see that he honors his word. Oh, Lord. Come on, bring. And that bringeth me forth from my enemies. Thou also hast lifted me up on high above them that rose up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen. And I will sing praises unto thy name. Now, did y'all see that? Thou has delivered me from the violent man. Do y'all know where he's coming from with that? There are some wicked men out here, y'all. 
I'm talking about violence. And God says that they're going to be fierce before Jesus comes. There's going to be some fierce brothers. And, 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 and I don't know if y'all have ever seen that. But there's some brothers out here that just look like death and they will kill you in an instant and think nothing of it. I remember some years ago we were doing this property and Elder would uh, uh, should remember there was a guy we were doing houses for these guys they sold drugs but we maintained the property there was a guy there this day was like nothing I personally had ever seen you look at this guy you could see darkness you could see Satan Brother, the brother looked like he was there to do a hit. You don't feel this way about everybody. This was different. It was so bad that we had some brothers that were working for us. When they saw him, they would not go in the yard. Seriously, wouldn't go in the yard. That's how much fear. This brother looked like Dr. Death. Like he killed for a living. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, he was down here from Chicago for business. Mm -hmm. So um, when David said what he just said, that the Lord delivered me from the violent man. Y'all ever knew anybody plotting to get you? And meant business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God saved him from the violent man. And God covered you even when you ain't all the way right. Oh, yes. Uh, you know why? Because he know the future. There you go. He said those whom he foreknew, he predestined. What God knew about you, the, the decisions that God knew that you would make in the future has a lot to do with all the traps God saved you from because he knew one day you would say yes and he had mercy on you all of that time to bring you to the time where you would turn change your life boy you just gotta appreciate the Lord go ahead he is the tower of my salvation for his king and showeth mercy to his anointed unto David and to his seed forevermore. Now, I don't know if y'all got that. Read that 51 one more time before we uh, share what we learned. Listen, tell me what he's saying. He is the tower of my salvation for his king and showeth mercy to his anointed unto David and to his seed forevermore. What do you see? Even when David is gone, his offspring is going to be blessed to the end. He showed mercy to all of David's children, David's offspring. That's a part of a promise that says what? Peace wouldn't leave his house. Not peace. Uh, the sword. No, because the sword was destruction. Yeah, the sword was mm -hmm. destruction. I forgot how it's worded. Uh, so when he said, uh, and showeth mercy to his anointed, which was David, and to his seed. unto David and to his seed forever. God's mercy was going to be on David's seed forever. What comes to mind? What happened with Solomon? Oh, Solomon. He was blessed. Yeah. He, he was a king. And he made mistakes. And he still yeah. had faith. Just made mistakes? Oh, wow. <laughs> Did he not do a bald face in the wrong direction? And God promised, he said, if, if Solomon messed up, I'm going to get him with the rod of men. But my mercy shall never depart from him. 
So when you talk about the mercy of God, David's seed was blessed. As wicked as Solomon became, now y'all, that's, boy, that's, that's tough to say. He messed up, y'all. Making those Shemite for their gods and doing all this stuff with these heathen women doing. I mean, they got him out there bad. Got him out there bad. But God always had mercy on him because of what he promised David. Yeah. And, and I'm going to say in all fairness to Solomon, uh, I don't think any of us could handle. I think a lot of us would have done the same things that he did. Knowing that we would never lose God's mercy, how many of us would still stay on point, 100% faithful, knowing that God's mercy is never going to leave you? I ain't worshiping over the gun. I ain't doing that. Yeah. Now, I can see him getting off with the women. I understand that. I get that. But worshiping other gods, oh, he got here. Man. I just don't understand. You know God. Your dad, I know you know. But, but you know what your God told you? Leave those worldly women alone. He said, now, because fooling with them, they will turn your heart. Yeah. And you know what? God, no. Y'all, yeah. we don't have to learn everything. You know, yeah. he said that's what would happen. Yes, yes, yes. You can't entertain that. And so that's what happened. Come on, Scott, share with us some of what you got. Stop using God for attention. Stop using God for attention? Yeah, because he's giving you all that, and people are giving you all that attention except for God. Oh, people are praising you, and you getting the glory instead of God getting the glory. So when people say, oh, Sky, you the best, what are you telling? Well, I'm going to tell them, no, it's not me that's doing it. It's God that's doing it. Say it louder. You start whispering. Say it so they can hear you. It's not me that's doing it. It's God who's doing all the work for me. So that's what you tell them. It's not you that's doing it. It's God doing all the work. God doesn't even get paid for it. <laughs> he don't get paid for it. Oh, see. Because we don't want to do too much unless we're getting paid, right? <laughs> oh, you preaching, Scott. Go ahead, Queen. Don't look for God in the end if you can't find the time to serve him. Now. Oh, don't look for God in the end if you can't find time to serve him? Right. Okay, Carson. Um, I have two uh, watch how you look at our watch how we look at ourselves and there's no excuse for you to not go to church oh watch how we look at ourselves oh do you have a you ever have an exalted view of yourself or do you have a humble view of yourself which one that you you way up here you know you think you're better than everybody else just like <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what was the other one? Um, there's no excuse for you to not go to church. There's no excuse not to go to church. Lord have mercy. Do you make sure you get there on time? You do? That's why you go with Nana. <laughs> <laughs> my wife beat her on time. I don't do that. <laughs> Just in case anybody listening. <laughs> yeah, now nah, I do see I, I, I do see your house there for Sabbath school. I, I see that. Okay, Queen, you had another one. Uh, okay, yeah. Um uh, when, when you put God first, he gives you everything you need. When you put God first, he gives you everything you need. That's very good. Go ahead, Paige. Um, Proverbs 
Oh, Paisley. God will protect you if you follow him. That's right. Thank you, Paisley. That's pretty, that's really good. Okay, y'all. Thank you for taking the time to share this Bible study with us. I want you to do a sneak peek at chapter 23. There's something in that text that you really will open up a lot of this Bible to you uh, and for you. So spend a little time with the beginning of chapter 23, and I'm going to see if you all get it. Come on, let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much again for your many blessings. Thank you for the time that you blessed us to spend in your word. Father, we pray that you will continue to enlighten us, continue to shape and mold us, help us to be pleasing in thy sight. Forgive us, Lord, for all our misrepresentations, all of our unfaithfulness. Forgive us for our contrariness and help us to overcome it all. Watch between us while we absent one from another and bring us together safely in the morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.